r slash ask reddit by planet reddit police officers of reddit what is your best i think we have the wrong person story i've got two from 25 years ago when i was a cop one on one side of the badge and one from the other the first i got assigned a warrant service to pick up a wanted felon mr robertson was six feet tall 250 pounds long red hair bushy red beard and lived at let's say 123 elm saint pretty distinctive dude so i roll up to 123 elm street and sure enough there mowing his lawn in the front yard is the man himself six feet 250 red hair red beard i make contact with him hey mr robertson you got warrants and it's time to go to jail hook him up take him to jail and in central booking I get his property off him and while filling out the inventory happen to notice this guy is Mr. Robinson. Not Robertson. Sure enough. The wanted guy was my guy's landlord. And his twin brother from another mother doppelgranger. When I'd said Robertson. Robinson didn't even twig to the fact I hadn't said his name. He just heard the similar sounding name as his own. We had to walk the whole thing back and reactivate the warrant then kicked him loose with a handshake and an apology. Instead another patrol car joined him. And another. And another. Then all four lit me up. And spread out behind me. Blocking the road in a full felony stop. Well. This just got interesting. They went through the whole procedure. And I carefully followed their instructions. When they finally got me out and saw my uniform. They just stopped for a few seconds while I was trying to figure out just what the hell was going on. Then three of the officers got in their cars, turned off their lights, and took off. While the original officer told me I could put my hands down and explained what was going on. My car was a spot on match for the suspect vehicle in an armed robbery and shooting that had just occurred right up the road. I'd driven right by the scene before the cops even got there a few minutes before the officer in the next district spotted me and thought I was the suspect. It was an interesting night. The only actual cop. And yet still has a story about how they were the wrong guy. Two of my colleagues, murder squad detectives, attended custody to meet a defendant answering bail. When they arrived at the custody desk there were a couple of people hanging around. Waiting for their solicitors, they told the custody sergeant they were there for, insert name, and he pointed one of the guys out. They went up and introduced themselves and said they they would be questioning him at another station. So all three got in the car and headed off. Whilst driving, they told the defendant what would be happening. On arrival he would be arrested on suspicion of attempted murder. Questioned and either bailed or remanded. The guy was like you've got to be joking. Attempt murder? I was sharp lifting. He was relatively calm. Half laughing and shaking his head. A short time later one of the officer got a call from the custody SGT. Their actual bail appointment had arrived. There were two defendants with the same name answering bail that day. They apologized to the non-murderous shoplifter. Turned the car around and headed back to bring the right person in for questioning. Keystone cops to the maximum. Did that count as a confession that he had been sharplifting? Not admissible as he wasn't under caution. But tbf he may have said I was nicked, arrested, for sharplifting or something. Can't remember specifics. Had forgotten all about this until this post cropped up. There had been a string of robberies, 7 in 2 weeks, in my neighborhood. So everyone was on high alert. I was home by myself. And one of my dogs started puking. So I rushed to let him outside. Forgetting my dad had set the alarm. We had a silent alarm. So I had no clue it had been tripped. Sending out a dispatch request to the local 5-0. 5 minutes later. There was a knock on the door. I'm young. Home alone by myself. And had been told to never answer the door if I was alone. So I didn't. They kept knocking. Long story short. They broke the door down. They thought they had caught the burglars. Multiple cars. I vaguely remember there being a K9 unit involved. And the police had their suspect. A 9 year old girl. Crying her eyes out. I was not the group of thieves. Who ended up being caught about a week later. I'd like to imagine them putting you in cuffs. 
high-fiving each other and telling you you'd be going to jail for a long time for your crimes. I remember them being just as confused as I was. But. I did get to be put into custody. As it was looked down upon to leave a young child, under 12, by themselves. So they had to talk to my dad before they left. He had gone to work. And I was waiting for my mom to get home. So they both came home to cops in their house lol. In our family we had a great uncle who tattooed his name and social security number to his shoulder. Apparently he had the same name and birthday as another guy with a prison record. And had kept hearing about it. It came in handy at least twice when he was pulled over and the cops started arresting him. Each time he got out because he had his social security as proof that he was innocent. I hope he keeps that semi covered up unless he needs it. It wouldn't be hard to imagine that some identity thieves would consider a guy with a social security number tattooed on his shoulder to be an easy target. It's better to be paranoid than screwed. He passed away in the mid 90s. Before identity theft was a big thing. I'm pretty sure he got the tattoo in the 1940s while he was in the military and more likely to die in combat than have anyone steal his identity. I also never saw his shoulder. As he dressed pretty formally, button down shirts. Suspenders on his pants. Always with a fedora. Not a cop but the wrong person in question. There is another man 2 years younger than me who shares my first and last name. Exact same spelling. The only difference is the middle name. Police were investigating a county trustee who was giving people housing assistance checks they didn't qualify for. They would cash the assistance and give the trustee a percentage back. One of the civilians being investigated was the other guy. A plainclothes cop in an unmarked car shows up with a female holding a clipboard. Identifies himself as a state trooper. And within 5 minutes is asking me for copies of my bank records. He's threatening to subpoena if I don't comply. This isn't the first time I've been mistaken for him. I used to get his mail all the time. And I even asked if they were looking for me or the other guy. Pointing out our different middle names. I got really suspicious really fast. A high pressure situation. Demanding access to my financial records. Threats of subpoenas and further legal action. So I started to doubt this was an actual police officer and was in fact just a scammer. The badge he showed me was just a plastic square like my driver's license. Further muddying the issue. I told him I wanted to speak with the police and called dispatch. Two uniformed officers showed up 15 minutes later and confirmed the guy was an officer. The woman with him was some kind of auditor and records keeper. After a further 15 minutes of questions the woman pulled the guy away and pointed out something on her phone. Yep. They wanted the other guy. I live in a small town in rural England. And we used to get some trainees new police officers from the Met there for their training. Me and some of my friends were teenagers we were walking to the supermarket. Because what else is there to do in a small town pre-internet? Suddenly from out of nowhere this police car comes screaming out of nowhere. Sirens going and screeches to a halt in front of us. A young guy. Must have only been about 5 years or so older than us jumps out and starts giving us the whole hair dryer treatment. He lines us up and starts taking our statements of what we had been up to in the last hour slash gloating at us you lads are in trouble now. Criminal damage. Trespass. Theft. You have really screwed up. With him was the local Bobby and he came up to each of us in turn after the younger guy had grilled us and said very jovially now don't worry lads. I'm sure it's a misunderstanding. We've had some reports of a break-in. You don't match the preliminary description. And I'm sure we'll get this cleared up when we get the more detailed description come through. So the more detailed description comes through the radio and the young guy is wearing the biggest shit-eating grin you've ever seen. The description didn't even remotely match. And honestly the young guy looked so disappointed we all ended up feeling sorry for him. So yeah. That was probably quite embarrassing for him. Med guy thinks he's Nicholas Angle, huh? Just wanted to shoot his gun in the air and go on ugh. Not an officer but. I live in a neighborhood in Indy that is going through a major revitalization right now. So it's very much in a transitional phase. We rent a house from a good friend of ours. He bought the house from some garbage people who had lived there for a long time. These people did. Sold. Made drugs. There was violence. Prostitution. Everything. In general the house was disgusting. Unlivable. Really. 
Just the worst. Well the scumbags who lived here still try to use our address even after 5 years. About a year and a half ago one of the dudes used our address to renew his driver's license at the BMV. He even had the audacity to leave a knot for us to call him when the license came in. Fast forward a few months. Around Christmas time. We are all sitting around. Watching TV when we get a knock on the door. My husband answers it and it's a SWAT team with guns drawn. They see my husband. Who does not look like a methed out crackhead. And inside are our two little boys. My parents. And me nursing our baby plus the Christmas tree and all the lovely trappings of our home. They immediately put their guns down and my husband and I have a lovely chat with them. Yeah. They had our house surrounded. Guns drawn. The whole shebang. Looking for this dude who was wanted on some kind of violent felony. We were pissed at this dude who I refer to as Big Nasty. Well that's escalated quickly from a simple scam to a SWAT raid. Yup. Just a couple weeks ago I had another nasty use our address to take out an ESPN magazine subscription. I was livid. BC all he has to do is go online print off the billing and bam. Proof of address. This time I called USPS and local police to appeal a federal case again him. Plus my landlord is pretty sure he's using our address to commit benefits fraud as he technically lives with his daughter but they don't want him counted as an adult who should be drawing an income. This guy definitely went through some shit being the wrong person. Photo of the two men. A Missouri man spent nearly 17 years behind bars for robbery until his doppelganger was discovered, and the other guy looked so much like him that authorities decided to toss out his conviction. Jones. 41. Had been serving a 19 year jail sentence for a 1999 robbery when he heard other inmates buzzing that another prisoner looked just like him, and even shared his first name. A star said. It's unclear what the other man was locked up for. And Jones never saw his doppelganger. But he told two legal interns assigned to his case about the rumors. According to Alice Craig. One of Jones' lawyers. The interns brought the message back to their superiors at the Midwest Innocence Project and the Paul E. Wilson Defender Project. Who dug further into the case. It turned out that not only did the other man bear an uncanny resemblance to Jones. He also lived closer to the site of the crime. Jones doppelganger. Ricky Amos. Used to live with his mother in Kansas City. Kansas. Near the address of the incident. Craig said. Jones lived across the state line in Kansas City. Mo. When I saw that picture. It made sense to me. Said Jones. Who has denied committing the robbery? To the star. His lawyers showed the two men's photos to the victim. Two witnesses in the prosecutor in Jones case, and all four admitted they could not tell the pair apart. According to the star. The most frustrating thing about the whole thing is that there was a GoFundMe page set up to help Jones in his freedom. I mean for duck's sake just give the guy some money. Interestingly this is one of the reason why we have fingerprinting. It is all because of two guys Will West and William West. Who not only had the same name but also looked alike. They were both sentenced to jail at Leavenworth Penitentiary in Kansas over 100 years ago. The arrival of Will West in 1903 caused the records clerk at the prison considerable confusion. Because he was convinced he'd processed him two years previously. Full story here. Holy shit they look even more alike than the Ricks do. Since everyone else isn't a cop. I was 16 and worked at a golf course mowing lawns and such. We got a call at home from the cops that said I'm a suspect in a hit and run accident because my plate S were on the car that drove away without stopping. The cops said the car was maroon colored. My car was gray. We told them and figured that was that. The next day at work there was a minor accident. A Dumbas co-worker pulled a metal rake too hard in the rack holding it came down onto my forehead. It wasn't a deep wound. But it bled a lot. My boss took me to the ER to get my head super glued. And to be safe. Took me home too. Thus my car stayed at the golf course. That evening a cop comes by and finds me with a head wound and my car is missing. I look quite guilty. By sheer luck. The cop calls someone after talking to my parents and discovers they got the guy and the plate numbers were close. I probably would have been arrested. With how many people have not a cop but. Stories. It's scary how frequent it seems that people are searched and nearly arrested. 
if not arrested by the police purely for wrong addresses or mistaken identity. For sure. I was pulled out of my truck at gunpoint because I was mistaken for my cousin who had outstanding warrants. I'm not a cop. But my mom had a story for this happened to her. Basically. It revolves around the show America's Most Wanted. A woman who looked almost exactly like my mom was featured on the show. She had the same hair. Same face. And the kicker. Same name. They even showed my mom's actual information, which I won't list here, as being the criminals. The story ended like every story on that show does. If you have any information regarding the whereabouts of this dangerous criminal, please call this number. Now onto my mom's perspective. She was just sitting at home on a Saturday night alone. As she lived alone. She was reading a Stephen King book. When she hears some commotion coming from the hallway. She ignores it. Lots of yelling. She had not seen the show which painted her as a criminal. Then suddenly bam. Her door is knocked down in an instant. About 10 cops flood into her one bedroom apartment. And she is arrested. She explained they had the wrong person. They claimed everything matched. Social security matched. DNA matched. Name matched. Photo resemblance matched. They kept her in jail for two weeks. It wasn't until they took fingerprints from the scene of a crime they said she committed. And the prints didn't match. That they realized she wasn't the criminal. It's scary to think if they had used her profile prints. Rather than crime scene prints as the set to compare to. That she would have been still in jail today. It was basically a life sentence. Obligatory not a police officer. But. I travel frequently across the Canada's border. Sometimes by bus. On one bus trip. The whole bus was held up by one woman. Who was pulled back to be interrogated. An hour later. She gets back on the bus. Announcing that there was a person on the most wanted list with her same name. However that person was a 5 feet 4 white male. And she was a relatively tall, probably 5 feet 10, black woman. It took them an hour of interrogating her to realize they had the wrong person. However that person was a 5 feet 4 white male. And she was a relatively tall, probably 5 feet 10, black woman. It took them an hour of interrogating her to realize they had the wrong person. I. What? Never pass up the opportunity to interrogate someone. Sometimes you'll uncover a crime. Of course. The fact that the interrogation is based on such a blatant duck up means that most judges will throw out anything you get. But you don't get in trouble for it. So who cares? Police stopped me once and asked me to get in the car cause I fit the description of someone they were looking for but they checked my ID and everything was cool. I asked them if they drop me home while I'm in the car and said it would be hilarious if they came to the front door with me to freak my mum out. She came to the door and as soon as she saw the police her face was the angriest I've ever seen it was hilarious. The local police gave my daughter a ride last year to where her car was after the police chase that resulted in them finally catching her fugitive mother-in-law. I was waiting for my daughter to get to our house for a cookout. When I get a call from her. Dara diii. What? Usually when she starts out like that she needs gas or a jump start. Guess who took a selfie in the backseat of a cop car? Somehow a statement like that out of nowhere doesn't surprise me anymore. Outstanding move. I was a curious little kid. My father stopped at the local liquor store to grab a bottle of wine and I was poking around. The door to the office was unlocked and I wandered inside. Sat in the chair and spun around a few times. Got bored. Wandered out. A few days later my father gets a call from the police. And we go in. As the officer is speaking to us I proceed to spun around in the chair and pick up and look at everything on his desk. After about a minute the officer says. Thank you for coming in. I see what happened. You can go. Turned out the owner's teenage son stole a few grand from the store and tried to blame it on the handsy 5 year old. I got blamed for stealing from an employer once. I knew I was innocent. Obviously. But besides them I was the only one to handle cash or the till. Big argument ensues and just as I'm about to walk out I notice fire 3 year old daughter playing in the till. I watch her grab the $1.50 I had collected earlier. I'm in Canada and the $50s are different shades of red. Or pink to a 3 year old. 
I pointed out what Fire Daughter was doing and they became very defensive. Not apologetic. Turns out they always let her play in the cash drawer and she never took anything out. Right then she announces proudly no mommy. I don't take anything but the pink ones because I like pink so they are mine. Never did get an apology. I took the next job I could find. And fire business went under shortly after. This reminds me of my sister at age 4 stealing cash from our parents because she was jealous I had money. Hysterical tears and I only took £3 which later turned out to mean £3.20 notes. Well like many other posts I'm not a PO but I did get felony stopped while on Las Vegas Boulevard. I left work pulled out of the parking garage and turned right on Tropicana. I then see lights behind me and start to pull over thinking it was an emergency vehicle. I am then surrounded by police with guns drawn. This was like midnight on the strip so it was intense. Police make get out walk backwards with my hands on my head. They cuff me and tear into my car almost immediately. Long story short it was another Mustang with out of state tags involved in a robbery. That was an intense evening. So did they pay for the damages they caused to your car? That's intense. Not a police officer. But I was the wrong guy once. I was dating this girl and when things didn't work out. She got vindictive. She had a copy of my car insurance and got a guy friend to pose as me to call the police and report my vehicle stolen. I go be bopping out of work one glorious Friday afternoon and get felony stopped by about 10 Dallas. TXPD officers. Guns drawn on me and everything. Right outside of the large office complex I worked at. Turns out the people who reported my car stolen used their own phone number when filing the report and eventually got caught and charged. Turns out the people who reported my car stolen used their own phone number when filing the report and eventually got caught and charged. Unbelievable. I won't be surprised if it is revealed that they believe other countries have moon too. Once again. Not a police officer. I was on the receiving end. I'd been at a small bar listening to some live music with a friend. We leave a couple hours later. And less than a mile from the bar I get pulled over. No big deal. I pull into a circular driveway and then I get scared. No fewer than 4 police cars surrounded us. 2 behind and 2 in front. They come to both sides and leave a number of officers at our windows while they run our licenses. See. Earlier. In between sets. A lady got on stage and warned any women there not to walk home or accept rides from strangers. Apparently. There had been a number of abductions and rapes in the area. My friend and I ignored it. We were not alone and we were not women. Finally. The cops give us our identification back and tell us we matched the description of the rapists. Didn't say how they determined it wasn't us. But apologized and sent us on our way. It wasn't until the next day we realized just how bad that could have been. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for 3 videos a day.